situation, or as you may know it, I don't even believe in past lives, but I must have done something really fucking terrible in a past life to deserve this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 2016. This week has yet again been dominated by Donald Trump, which is, in, which is irritating in and of itself, because WikiLeaks continue to release emails connected to the Clinton campaign that raise serious issues, from that campaign's behavior, to the fact that hack may have come from the Russian government, to how journalists should respond to stolen documents. But it is hard to focus on any of that when the man who could be our next president is now one unearthed 90s-era teen people interview away from being on a sex offender registry. Because Trump has had quite the week. The Republican presidential candidate facing a barrage of accusations from multiple women who say Trump touched them inappropriately, kissed them against their will. The first time, it was just like a kind of a quick hug and a kiss on the lips, and I was shocked just because I was like, what was that? I've never had anybody treat me like that. I just kind of excused it as, well, I guess maybe that's how people on the East Coast greet each other. Okay, well, first, first, that is horrible, but, but for the record, that is not how we on the East Coast greet each other. The way we greet each other is very simple. We don't do it. We stare at the ground and hope the other person moves away quickly so we can go back to muttering under our breath without seeming crazy. That's how we do it on the East Coast. This, this has frankly been a week of upsetting allegations regarding Trump. And I'm not going to make you sit through all of them again. Because all you really need to know about the man is that this was his response to one of his accusers. Believe me, she would not be my first choice, that I can tell you. You don't know. That would not be my first choice. Now, two weeks ago, I told you that if you looked up, you could see Rob Bottom. Then, last week, I told you that if you looked up, you could see the place we were a week ago. Well, this week, if you look up, all you can see are the thin plywood boards surrounding us on all sides because we are in a coffin and we are buried alive in the horror that is this election. But incredibly, Trump's remarks were actually in keeping with the tone he promised this week. The Republican nominee proclaiming on Twitter he is a free man. Quote, it's so nice that the shackles have been taken off me and I can now fight for America the way I want to. Yes, the shackles are off, which is actually an apt metaphor, as it calls to mind both Frankenstein's monster and a rabid dog. And, and before I start to run through what Trump has said this week, keep in mind, we take this show at 6 p.m. So here is a rundown of some of the things he feasibly could have said between now and the point when we air. All those clowns people keep seeing would be appointed to his cabinet. He can get the best deals with China because he is in fact 100% Chinese. The border wall is going to be constructed out of Rosie O'Donnell's bones. Abortions are caused by low energy stalks. And finally, it's not rape if it happens on a yacht. But, but here is what he has said as of now. First, he burned bridges with his own party, calling Paul Ryan weak and ineffective. And then, at campaign rallies, dialed the knob up to full-on conspiracy theorist. Hillary Clinton meets in secret with international banks to plot the destruction of U.S. sovereignty. This is a conspiracy against you, the American people, and we can not let this happen or continue. Holy shit! That is not the kind of thing that a presidential candidate says. It's, it's the kind of thing. It's the kind of thing that a man in a tinfoil hat screams inside his concrete bunker because he thinks his soup cans have been bumped by the lizard people in the White House. But Trump isn't just rampaging against his political opponents, he's rampaging against his own campaign. When one journalist tweeted that at a recent rally, a Trump supporter was standing in the back shouting, stay on the issues, his own campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway, responded, that was me, I was there. And even if she meant that as a joke, it's not a great indication of how much control she has over her candidate. It's like she's already thinking ahead to her campaign tell-all book, or possibly her tell-all trial at The Hague. But, 